How does Zeus Traffic Manager work? In Zeus Traffic Manager, there are two key concepts. The concept of a virtual server that manages connections from remote clients to the Traffic Manager, and the concept of a pool. It manages connections from the Traffic Manager to the back-end servers, web servers, email servers, app servers, that host the applications that you want to load balance and manage. When Zeus Traffic Manager receives a request from a remote client, it processes that request as follows. First of all, the virtual server can optionally decrypt traffic if it's encrypted with SSL, so that that traffic can be inspected and manipulated later on. The virtual server applies service protection policies, anti-denial of service policies, to make sure that that request is not part of a flood of traffic from an individual user, and to make sure that the request is well formed and doesn't look like a malicious denial of service attack. The virtual server employs TCP offload, reading the request from the slow remote client and buffering up request data before it makes a connection to the fast local application servers. And the virtual server can use rate shaping to identify individual classes of requests and only admit those classes at a particular rate. Three requests to the login page per second, for example, or five requests per second from an individual web spider. Once the virtual server has pre-processed the request, it decides which pool should be used to load balance that request to the backend servers. A pool performs load balancing, performs session persistence if it's necessary to pin that request as part of the session to a particular backend server. The pool can employ bandwidth shaping to rate limit how fast data is written to the backend servers, for example, to throttle back large file uploads. It can optionally re encrypt traffic with SSL, and it can multiplex multiple HTTP connections down a much smaller number of fast HTTP keep alive channels. This has the effect of reducing the number of concurrent requests that backend servers have to process and increasing the performance and the efficiency of those backend servers. The request is written to a backend server. If a response is not received or if the response appears corrupt, the traffic manager can retry that request against other servers in the same pool. Once a correct response is received, the virtual server can optimize and control it in a number of ways before it sends it back to the remote client. It can apply content compression to reduce the amount of bandwidth required to send the request back to the client. It can cache the response so that when multiple clients ask for the same resource, then that res those requests can be satisfied from the local cache rather than having to send multiple duplicate requests to the same backend, ser to backend servers. TCP offload frees up the backend servers quickly to go on and process more requests while the traffic manager buffers up the response and trickles it slowly back to the remote client. Service level monitoring is used to look at the performance of the backend servers for particular types of requests, for example, transactions against a credit card processing system. That way, the traffic manager can gauge how efficiently particular tasks are being formed. It can give an indication of the level of service that end users are receiving for those tasks, and if necessary, it can employ different traffic management policies based on the performance of key parts of your, of your service or your website. Bandwidth shaping can be used to identify and rate limit particular types of response. For example, large downloads could collectively be limited to 15 or 20% of the available bandwidth. And transaction logging gives you web server style access logging, logging every single request that's processed through your traffic manager. On its own, that gives you a sophisticated but fairly stable and unexciting traffic management solution.